Folks, when we 21st century people think Christian or use the word Christian or Christianity, the meaning of these words comes from 4th century realities, not those of Jesus' day, the 1st century. The meanings of Christian and Christianity got shaped three centuries after the Jesus movement. Therefore, whenever we apply these terms to Jesus or his immediate followers and their groups, we are guilty of anachronism. When we call somebody Christian, usually we mean a person who holds certain doctrines. Those doctrines were formulated in the 4th century or afterward. Christians are usually monotheists that accept the Trinity of God and Christ's double natures, true God and true man, right? Many Christians today have been shaped by, if not accept, a hierarchically structured organizational church. Folks, these realities grow out from Constantinian times, 4th century. All of the familiar features of Catholic and Orthodox Christianity we know today grew out from the 4th century and not really before. Therefore, to imagine Jesus as being Christian or the direct founder of Christianity, or to think of Paul as being a Jew who converted and became Christian and was the second founder of Christianity is simply wrong. Scholars like Rosemary Radford Ruther explain this nearly a half century ago. Why do so few Christians even have a clue about this? Jesus and his followers were not Christian. Jesus wasn't called Christian either. Why? Context group scholar John Eliot explains this was because of two reasons. First, the Greek term Christianos did not yet exist in the time of the pre-Paschal Jesus. Second, the term, originally meaning Christ lackey, could never have been applied to Jesus, who was believed by his followers to be the Messiah, or Christ. During his ministry, none of Jesus' followers were called Christianoi, Christ lackeys, because this was before that nomenclature had been developed. Christianus does not appear until the latter half of the first century. It's found in only two documents written at the very end of that century, both in the New Testament, the book of Acts and 1 Peter. Even then, followers of Jesus did not call themselves Christianoi. They were called that. What does that mean? And why is that important to know? Well, what we're really asking is, where does Christian come from? Folks, it originated not as a term of self-identification, but as an opprobrious label coined by outsiders to mock and demean and dehumanize the followers of the crucified Jesus Christ into being Christ lackeys, nothing people. It was only gradually accepted by Christ followers as an honorable self-designation, but that developed at a snail's pace. For us 21st century people, to use Christian or Christianity to identify Jesus and his earliest followers is anachronistic and problematic. And we really need to stop doing this. It's a historical. There is no Christianity before 325 Common Era, really. Without the elaboration of official Christology and Trinitarian doctrine and ecclesial practice, you cannot have Christianity. Christianity implies these essential features of belief and behavior that should be obvious. I mean, unless you want to say that Christian can mean anything. Saying Christian can mean anything, Christianity can be anything, and believe anything, is basically to say it's nothing, right? I and mean, when you say Christian or Christianity, you mean something specific, don't you? Okay, so let's get specific. When you call anyone living before the 4th century a Christian, you are erroneously presupposing that Christianity existed back then as a religion independent of Israel. Such a claim would be baseless, folks. And yet, spurious familiarity keeps millions of Christians insisting that Jesus founded Christianity and that his disciples were the earliest Christians and that Paul converted to Christianity. Why does this error persist? Well, two groups primarily are to blame. The first group we have to blame are the academics and the people in church authority. We gotta blame academic immobility and laziness. Homilus, preachers, catechists, Sunday school teachers, so-called apologists, theologians, Bible translators, and commentators are partly responsible for this glaring historical distortion. 
And if any of you belong to those groups and you want to repent of something this Lent, you, you want to do some real metanoia work, okay, here's something for you to look at. Stop calling first century Jesus and friends Christians. The Jesus movement was comprised of Israelites, not Christians. So call them Israelite followers of the way, or Messianists, or Jesus group members, but never Christians. But I don't want to give academics and church authority people and authorities and religion teachers the sole blame for this. We have to also blame ourselves, folks. We have to blame popular imagination and pooled ignorance of Christians and other 21st century people as well. How many 21st century Christians and Jews mistakenly believed that as soon as Jesus was born, Christianity was a functioning religion, up and running with Mary as the first worshiping member? But Mary wasn't a Christian and neither was Jesus. You cannot find Christianity in the New Testament and with good reason. It didn't exist in the first century common era. We don't really see Christianity in Ignatius of Antioch. By the way, did he die in 108 or was it 140? See, it's difficult to tell because we really can't trust Eusebius, the patron saint of fundamentalists who writes about his death around 108. We can't really trust his dating. But anyway, whenever he died, Ignatius of Antioch didn't really use the term in his letters. He used another Greek term, Christianismus, which literally translates into Christianism. You see it in his letter to the Magnesians, his letter to the Romans, and his letter to the Philadelphians. This Christianismus, this Christianism of Ignatius, perhaps a term he coined himself, means something like the customs of Christ lackeys. He's not really talking about 4th century Christian doctrine and practice. He's not talking about the Nicene Creed. Those weren't realities of his day yet. Jesus and his disciples, Paul and the evangelists later on, were in no sense Christians during their lifetimes. The concept of Christianity did not yet exist. So, how could they be Christians? Every time we apply the term Christian to these people, we misconstrue the social scene and muck up interreligious dialogue. As John Eliot rightly says, the current conversation between synagogue and church, he's talking about beautiful interreligious dialogue between Jews and Christians, synagogue and church, the current conversation between synagogue and church bogs down in a morass of false assumptions regarding pedigrees and polemics. But wait a minute. Isn't it true that in the New Testament, weren't the followers of Jesus called Christians? Therefore, we have the word Christian there. So there were Christians, right? That's just it. They were called. Passive voice. Were called. Western people have an extreme difficulty understanding the passive voice. What does the passive voice mean? They didn't call themselves that. Other people, their enemies called them that. They were called indicates the passive voice. Other people, enemies called them that. Yes, in our English Bible translations, we do read, in three verses, the term Christian or Christians. But more importantly, these New Testament people were insultingly labeled that by other folks, outsiders, not insiders. Let's take a moment to think about this carefully. As I just said, in the late 20s common era, the term Christianos did not yet exist. And even if it had, the meaning of Christianos, Christ lackey, would have excluded its application to Jesus himself because he was thought to be by his followers the Messiah, the Christos, the Christ himself. Besides, the followers of Jesus in those earliest post-resurrection Jesus groups honored Jesus. Why would anybody honoring Jesus use an insulting slur intended to degrade Jesus and his disciples, to dehumanize Jesus and his disciples? The nomenclature Christianoi evolved slowly into being an honorific, but that process had barely begun to start in the first century. Therefore, every time modern people classify believers of Jesus from the first three centuries common era as Christians, it is always incorrect. Again, the term Christianos is seen only three times in the New Testament, and it is always found in the passive voice, and in only two writings, from the later third of the first century, Acts and 1 Peter. 
Acts chapter 11 verse 26. For a whole year they met with the Jesus group assembly and taught a large number of people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called. Passive voice were first called by other people were first called Christianus, Christ lackeys. Acts chapter 26 verse 28. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you will soon persuade me to play the Christ lackey? It's not something really Agrippa wants to do, right? 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16. But whoever is made to suffer as a Christianos, why would you be suffering as that? Isn't that a great thing to be a Christian? Oh, it's Christ lackey. But whoever is made to suffer as a Christ lackey should not be ashamed, but glorify God of the name. Listen, folks, that verse never would have been written if the author and the people he's writing to, his audience, didn't think that Christianos was an insult, a shameful, degrading term to be called. That's why the verse exists, folks. As John Eliot explains, Christian is a Greek term with a borrowed Latin ending, the suffix ianos. As time passed, Latin speaking or Latin influenced circles began using Christ, not as a title, which it originally was, Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Messiah, but rather like it was part of Jesus' proper name. You see this in Spanish, Jesucristo, one name, right? This gave origin to Christian because when you add the Latin suffix ianus to the now proper name Christ, it means a partisan or an adherent or a client of Christ. You see these kinds of formulations in the New Testament. For example, Herodianoi, the Herodians, that means a partisan of Herod or a client of Herod. But it took a while before Christ became Jesus' last name. And it took a much longer time for the Messiah Jesus followers to accept Christianoi as their own honorable self-designation. Originally, it was a terrible label coined by outsiders to demean and dehumanize the foolish followers of this crucified disgrace. All this helps Americans better understand how Christianos in the late first century, a slur with grotesque opprobrium, slowly evolved through different contexts into an honorific self-designation, especially under Emperor Constantine. Today, Christian and Christianity imply so many beliefs and behaviors that simply could not exist without many theologically evolved Christological and Trinitarian doctrines and ecclesial practices. My brothers and sisters, this took time, centuries of time. Christian and Christianity just didn't exist in Jesus' day or that of the generations that followed his. Now, before people start jumping to conclusions, none of this disproves Christianity or invalidates Christianity or shows its beliefs and practices to be false. All it does is help demonstrate the evolution of such. And if there be a continuity between Christians today and the Jesus movement, as many Christians hold there is, it must be a continuity within development. So what to do? For starters, please avoid using the term Christian, Christians, and Christianity whenever identifying Jesus and his earliest followers. Can you do that? I think you can. When referring to followers of Jesus in 1st and 2nd centuries or 3rd century after the death of Jesus, why not use the name Christian only in those instances when the primary sources do so? And for the New Testament, that's mostly on the insulting lips of outsiders. And again, we can call the early New Testament followers of Jesus Messianus. Or we could employ those various identifiers that Jesus' followers used for identifying themselves, like Israelites, disciples, holy ones, children of God, brothers, sisters, household of God or family of God, brotherhood and sisterhood, Israel of God, the way, the new creation, the body of Christ, and many more.